Consequently, his name was not placed in our service watch list. In March 2017, Minor approached the service with a written complaint letter over threat to his life and therefore requested for protection. The letter was scrutinized as it is normally the practice. The fears expressed by the petitioner, minor in this case, were also to a large extent established, even though the, I mean, the identity of those behind the threat was yet to be established. And therefore, because of the right to life, which is guaranteed by our constitution and universally recognized, Miner's case was directed to be looked into so as not to allow his life to be in jeopardy. I would like to state here that the service has nothing to do with the reinstatement into the public service of the Federation of Minor as well as a subsequent promotion. However, the Antony General of the Federation of Minister of Justice, sometimes, I think in early 2016 or late 2015, I can't remember the date, because it was not through a formal document, placed a call to me when he was outside the country. I requested me to advise him on a request that he got through a source that Maina wanted to meet him and that he wanted me to advise him whether to agree to see Maina or not in that foreign country. And I responded to the Attorney General that he should accept to see Maina, but he should not see him alone. He should see him with a third party. And of course, the Attorney General accepted the advice and later he, I mean, he confirmed to me that he indeed has seen Maina in the presence of the National Security Advisor. Of course, the details of what has happened and the subsequent happenings after that meeting, I believe must have been submitted or presented earlier to this committee by the Attorney General himself. Therefore, Mr. Chairman, I would like to conclude by making some observations of the service on this particular unfortunate incident, which to us, there are just about two or three things to learn and probably will guide the committee in reaching to a very uh, you know, appropriate conclusion or probably submission or directive or request to government as the case may be. One, it is our belief that there is so much sensationalization of this issue by some agencies of government and of course misuse of the public media. Two, there is now also a very glaring evidence of the duplicity or I would say lack of a clearly defined role of services when it comes to issues of this nature, and which is again an issue that needs to be looked into with a view to making necessary amendments to laws if that is necessary, or even taking more drastic measures so that 
we will continue. I mean, we will stop at least, you know, portraying this country in a very bad light. And lastly, Mr. Chairman, honorable members, there is also a very glaring evidence that there is failure, very glaring failure, to share information or to collaborate or create the necessary synergy DG, between some critical DG DSS. Areas. Thank you, you are saying, saying I finish, Mr. Chairman. I finish. Sorry, please. No, what I want to say is just to correct an impression you are trying to create. What I want to say is this committee is an investigative hearing. Yes. It is after our investigation that we will come with whether there is evidence for this or for that. Because what we are doing now, you are already doing our work for us. If that were to be the case, I think the best thing is for us to fold our table and then move no. and allow you to send I'm, I'm sorry your say, discoveries. I thought you are just making oral testimony to this committee. So I don't think you are in the right place to say this is what you have discovered. One, this is what you have discovered. Two, this is what you have discovered. Three, if that were to be the case, I don't think we'll be here. You have your job, and we respect you very well for that. And I believe we equally have our job which has been assigned to us by the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended. Thank you. Thank so you.